Audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Coming up today on The Story. I met a lady who came in for help with food and she had been sleeping in her car for more than a year. I really struggled. The next day I went to Bible college and I sat in a theology lecture where we talked about what it meant to be a disciple of Jesus. And we came to the part where we were looking at the cost of being a disciple. And that's when the Holy Spirit really spoke to me and I knew that I needed to try and do something. The Story. Hi, I'm Jimmy Colfax. Welcome to The Story. Well, it's hard to believe in this day and age there are still people in society who don't have a place to call home or a roof over their heads. People who would like nothing more than to have a warm place to sleep at night. Well, two people have decided to do something about this. They are Jenny Willits and Trevor Ingemels. We'll find out how they decided to help today on The Story. Jenny and Trevor are speaking with Eric Scatterbo. So, Jenny, let's start with you. What was your life like before getting involved, and then how has it changed? Well, I was a full-time Bible college student at Melbourne School of Theology. Uh, I'm a mom of uh, two children, though one is married and one's getting married, so I'm nearly done doing that (laughs) part. Um, I'm a wife, obviously, and a member of my church. And, yeah, I was studying at Bible College, uh, Bachelor of Ministry, and I'm getting close to the end of it. But, yeah, I um, also last year started to volunteer at the food bank that our church runs in Lilydale. And that was a very impacting time for me and has How to- so? totally changed my life. So I started to work there just one morning a week and began to meet people who were part of my community who I guess I didn't know really existed before I went there. So I, every time I was there, I would meet people who were really struggling just to put food on the table and began to meet more and more people who hadn't got a place to live and uh, met one lady across the table from a community meal who uh, looked and sounded very much like me and a little bit older than me, professional lady, and um, was horrified when I found out that she was sleeping in her car. Um, that what happened? Lady, well, um, I took her home. <laughs> um, I, I mean, also, How why? did she come to yeah. sleep in her car? Well, that was something I found out much later. Her story was... Uh, to do with an addiction, Mm. uh, but also a marriage breakdown. Um, But she stayed in her home for about eight weeks and we helped her as much as we could and managed to find a place she could move on into from there. Um, So that was probably the first person I met that really impacted me. But then in the winter last year, I met a lady who came in for help with food and she had been sleeping in her car for more than a year. Wow. And she was 61 years of age and that just blew my mind. I couldn't believe that that could happen Mm. and felt like it shouldn't happen. And I went to bed that night and struggled to sleep because I knew she was in her car. Um, I didn't take her home that like the other lady, but... I really struggled. The next day I went to Bible college and I sat in a theology lecture where we talked about what it meant to be a disciple of Jesus. And we came to the part where we were looking at the cost of being a disciple. And that's when the Holy Spirit really spoke to me. And I knew that I needed to try and do something to help that lady and people like her. And uh, cried my way pretty much through the rest of the class and went home and... um, tried to see if I could find that lady. I knew where she was parking her car and I didn't find her that day, but I did find her the next day. And She stayed with us for a weekend um, and taught me a whole lot of stuff uh, over that weekend. It wasn't an easy weekend, but it left me more determined to do something. And while she was still with us that weekend, I asked my friends on Facebook if anyone wanted to come and pray with me about this issue of homelessness to see if there was something we could do. And I guess that's really where this all started um, was just 15 people showed up at my house on the Monday to come and pray and they were from wow. all, all different churches, just people who are my friends. And um, from there we decided to have another prayer meeting in a couple of weeks' time. And I'm not sure if it was that one or the one after, but that's when I met Trevor and he and his wife Leanne came and uh, I met some, a couple who were just as passionate to try and do something. And uh, Trevor and Leanne have really invested since then in a big way. So, yeah, that's where I met Trevor. So, Trevor, tell us what was happening in your life at that time before you became involved. 
Yeah. So I think my wife and I have had an interest in helping people find accommodation for a long while. About 25 years ago, uh, the church we were going to started an emergency accommodation service and we had a bungalow and we had a girl come and stay for a year and that was probably the start of us of really having a, a heart for finding a place for people to stay but also journeying with people with whatever that involves. And then I suppose over those years we've had quite a number of people stay at our place and then I suppose then heard that Jenny was thinking and some of the others were about about doing something which was more for a crisis accommodation for homeless people. Well, well, let's go back to that Facebook post. Your wife saw it, I'm assuming. Are you on Facebook? Yeah. No, I'm not, a, I'm not a Facebook person. Um, so, no, through another another person that we know, Pete, um, he's passionate for homeless people. He said about to come along, and so we kind of tried to work out how we could do this. Mm-hmm. Um, we were well aware of people that were homeless, but they always seemed too hard to be able to help. Yeah, and that's another thing we're going to talk about that. This sounds really nice and warm and fuzzy, but at the end of the day, it's really hard work. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, well, we'll talk about that in just a little bit, but let's continue the story. Jenny, mm-hmm. you gathered a number of people to pray about this. Mm-hmm. Then what happened? Um, we started to put it out there with the churches. I began to hear, as we prayed, uh, God started to speak. So, that was cool. Uh, we yeah. were asking God, what can we do? And I didn't just want to pray. I actually thought we could do something. And um, more than one person, three different people came to me to tell me about schemes they'd heard about in different three different countries. Mm-hmm. So um, my mother in England went to a funeral in, in a church and found out that this church was part of a project that helped people who were homeless um, by opening up their buildings. So she connected me to the guy who... Um, organised that in Coventry, UK. A lady in my church here, her um, daughter-in-law in in the US in um, Wisconsin, I think it is. My home state. Oh. Must be a wonderful person. (laughs) (laughs) Was involved in an organisation where they, churches worked together and all year they opened up and took in four families at a time and accommodated them in the church buildings. So I got put in touch with her. And then another couple in our church had been in Canada and they'd helped with a scheme there called In From The Cold and it was very similar. So it was all about the same thing where churches were using their buildings to accommodate people. So um, I started doing a a lot of research into those different things and talking to people in those places that I could. And then when I'd gathered some information, I started to meet with the local pastors of the churches in Lilydale and Mount Evelyn, and I met with each of them individually. And then we had a, a meeting where a few of them managed to come together. But I presented to them the idea of this project and said, if we had a go at this, is this something you'd be interested in? And every one of them said yes. So, so it, what were you asking them? Uh, if we could work together as the church in our area um, to open up church buildings at night through the winter um, for a project where people who'd got nowhere to stay could come in, we'd give them a meal, we'd give them a bed for the night and we'd give them breakfast in the morning and then they'd go off during the day and then we'd do it all again the next day. So we were looking At a different church. Yeah, we were looking for seven churches who'd work together so that each would take one night of the week because there's barely a church that has... Uh, nothing going on in the evenings, but all of them who'd got space said, you know, they would give a night per week. So it's a uh, it's a decent amount of coordination. It takes a lot of volunteers to oh, run yeah. it. How many? We, we knew that we'd need at least 150 volunteers. Wow! Which sounded um, almost unachievable. And I know when yes. people heard us talk like that, they thought there was no way. But, um, yeah, we we exceeded that number. Now, you were telling me that a number of churches have a heart for wanting to help people, yep. but they're too small to do something by themselves. Yeah. But that's the beauty of what you're doing. They only have to do it for one night a week. They do, and they don't have to staff it themselves either. So the idea is that the churches work together. Anybody who wants to get involved as a volunteer puts up their hand and says, I want to volunteer, and then they work whatever night of the week they're available in whichever venue it's operating. So it doesn't have to be their church where they work. And so the idea is that all the volunteers work together. And so a church that we've used this year that has only eight members in its congregation. Only eight members. (laughs) On a good Sunday. (laughs) (laughs) And they have eight members. 
and they're all quite elderly, but they have a building and they have good heating in their building too and they were willing to to offer their building, but there's no way they could have staffed it themselves. So that is the beauty that, yeah, we do it together. So the people come in, they put up the stretcher beds? Yep, yep. And we, all the bedding? We have all, all of that. that on a trailer that we purchased. Um, yeah, so we move the trailer from place to place and all the bedding and the stretchers, everything's on there. And then we organise people to come cook a meal and yeah. And what was the Bible verse that most tugged your heart in this direction? <laughs> well, there's uh, in Matthew 25, it talks about um, the sheep and the goats and talks about how whatever you do for the least of these, you do it for me. And, um, you know, when I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. That was a big one. Um, but, but God also spoke as we prayed. God also really showed us that even if we only helped one person by doing this, it was worth us doing it. And that got confirmed by more than one person in more than one way um, that we were hearing this idea of the one, which is where the one in our name, stable one, comes from. Because um, we were reminded of the story of the lost sheep and how, you know, the shepherd left the 99 and went out to look mm-hmm. for the one that was lost. And I really believe what we're seeing in this project is God bringing back some of those people who were lost into his care. And so that that was confirmed. Uh, I heard God show me that story. I prayed the next day with a pastor who, when he said, can I pray, the first words out of his mouth were, God, you care about the 99, but you also care about the one. Mm-hmm. And so God just really showed us clearly that um, he cares about individual people. So if we only were to help one person through this project, it was still worth doing. You're listening to The Story. Today we're hearing Jenny Willits and Trevor Ingemel share about how they were able to get churches to work together to help people who are homeless. Next we'll find out about the impact their ministry is having. Back with more soon. The Story. If this program has highlighted something you'd like prayer for, we'd love to pray for you. Call 1-800-PRAY-FOR-ME. That's 1-800-772-936. It's a free call. Or text 0401 132 888. Hi, I'm Jimmy Colfax and this is The Story. We're continuing with Eric Scatterbo's conversation with Jenny Willits and Trevor Ingemels. They're the founders of an organisation that helps churches work together to help people who are homeless. It's called Stable One Ministry, and it's having a positive impact on the lives of the people being helped. And also, it's touching the hearts of the people who are helping. Now, Trevor, there's a story that has really touched you and and others. Mm. One of the best things about this is that the, all the volunteers that come along and the, the guests would tell us, you know, we love the food and we love having somewhere to stay, but it's the volunteers that we really enjoy getting to know. And from the volunteers' point of view, when we were first talking about it, some of them were a bit nervous about talking to people that they wouldn't normally mix with. And particularly that first week or so, some of the people we're saying, well, this is a bit, it's a bit out of my comfort zone, but I really do want to come and help. Now, uh, now why would it be out of their comfort zone? Uh, because they may be talking to people that might be a little bit rough around the edges that they normally wouldn't, wouldn't okay. mix with. Uh, Maybe have not bathed for a while. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yes. And so there was one particular night um, when there some guys came that had been sleeping in the park for quite a while and they did smell and their clothes were dirty, and this one particular guy, his feet had been wet in his shoes for quite a while, and we have a a dining room. Uh, There was a a place where people come and have a meal, and this guy particularly came in, and when he went in, a couple of the guests walked out because they couldn't stand the smell. So one of the volunteers who, who just had a heart for people, she said for this guy to sit down, and she asked if someone could bring uh, a container of warm water and she took off this guy's shoes and she washed this um, guy's feet who probably hadn't had a wash for maybe weeks and so she washed his feet and that had an impact on the other guests and the volunteers and and particularly myself um, just to see 
the way that someone was, pre- was prepared to do something practical that was the biggest need in this guy's life, yeah, that you wouldn't always normally choose to do. Talk about going out of your comfort zone. Yes. But I mean, that is Jesus with skin on mm. is an expression that she is just like, hey, I'm going to love this person. I'm going to look past the odor, the the looks or whatever, and I'm just going to minister to that person. That That's not easy. No. Do you have any similar stories, Jenny? I think um, one of the most impacting things for me really is that you get to see that these people People aren't people. Um, You don't see them as homeless people. Um, You don't see them. I know you don't like that term, but why is that? Because that's a label that people are not defined by the fact that they're homeless. That's not who they are. They're people created in the image of God, loved Mm -hmm. by God, children of God, who He sees and He loves regardless of what they do or don't do. And a lot of what they do is not that great. A lot of choices that people make and and, and not good choices, and they know that, and they don't need anyone to tell them that that they're doing the wrong thing because they know. Um, but they're people, and a lot of them have no connection with other people who are going to care for them anymore. Um, a lot of bridges have been burnt. So when they walk into a place where they are unconditionally accepted, where they're not judged, where they're loved, where they're given a warm place to be and a hot meal, perhaps the first home-cooked meal they've had in many months, um, it impacts them, but it impacts us too because we 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 grow to love them. And some of the most almost unlovable people we meet, it's amazing how you can come mm-hmm. to love them over time. Mm-hmm. And, and I fell in love with a lot of those guys um, in a in a healthy way. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's been awesome uh, to to meet people and be changed by them too. They've challenged and changed us too. So. Yeah. Well, share with us one particular person who's really impacted you. So on day one, we had one guest and he came and stayed for a while and has moved out and he's doing great, got some work and everything. He's he's done love really well. But on day two, we took in another four people and one guy who came on the second day has been with us for the last 12 weeks. Um, he came straight out of prison. He had one night in a motel and then came to us the next night, referred to us by his caseworker. And he stayed with us and we've watched him grow and change. And he came to church the first Sunday with myself and my husband and he's been every Sunday since. And uh, in two weeks' time, he's getting baptised because oh, he's wow. given his life to the Lord. So oh, fantastic. Um, it has been awesome to journey with him and to see him change and grow in confidence and make good choices for his life. And just last night... Uh, he came late to dinner because he'd connected with his mother and his brother for the first time in years and had had dinner with them. So that makes it all worth it for me. Uh, Every every morning where people are grumpy and um, things are not going well and there's issues to sort out and all the work it's taken... There's more than one. We started out saying if it was just one, it was worth doing, and there's more than one. Mm. And uh, it's a real blessing to see what God has done in people's lives. Well, we're quickly running out of time, but before we end today's conversation, what would you say to somebody listening who's like, wow, I, I really didn't know that this was such a big issue, and how can I do something? What would you say to them? I'd say do your research, find out. You know, how many people are there? Where are they? What are their needs? What's already happening in your community? So we did a bit of that work first. We didn't want to duplicate what was already going on. But the real gap was accommodation, plenty of food around, plenty of clothes, all those sort of things. And pray, ask God what he wants for you to do. And I think that that's really key is to just keep trying to follow what God shows you to do. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's going to be really costly. Um but that's what it means to be a disciple, isn't it? So there's been some difficult evenings, is that right? There's been lots of challenges, um, and we've learned so much. It's a pilot project. The next stage for us is to write up a big report about how it's gone and what we've learned and what we might do differently next time. Um, And there are some things that we've learned that we know we need to perhaps put different boundaries in or enforce the rules a bit more strongly. Um, on the whole, it's gone incredibly well. We've had no major incidents. Um, 
I'd say we could say fairly confidently there's been a successful project. I think we've had already 440 beds slept in over the 12 weeks, um, over 30 people, different people staying with us. Uh, And we know that for some people it's had a massive positive impact in their lives. Um, Not everybody, but for some. So we've learned a lot, but we're still learning and we're not professionals. We realise there's lots of areas we don't know very much about, but we know how to love people and we're learning how to do that better. And if you love people, it might cost you a lot, Mm. but it is worth it. Any final comments? Uh, One of the best things is the church is working together. Mm. Uh, It's been really good to go to all different denominations in the area and the pastors all wanting to do something together people volunteering at other people's churches and just feeling that sense of community that can happen. So um, I think at, on a whole lot of levels, it makes a difference to the churches as well. And and people in the community are included in, in being the volunteers as well. And people in the community are watching and seeing and being quite amazed at how the churches are working together to make something like this happen. And finally, the impact on your hearts and on your relationship with God? Uh, I've had to rely a bit more on God. I I find myself praying and talking to God about why this is happening and what do I do sometimes to to give me wisdom and to pray for for peace for the night and the guests. So I've had to kind of try and be more in tune with God. Um, But I'm feeling there's a number of guests that may say have gone to Sunday school or some had some church background, and it's really interesting when they come to the shelter, they might say, I haven't been to a church for 30 years, and maybe tell you a little bit about something that happened a long while ago, but there's a sense that it's okay for them to come to a church, and so that's a a, a special thing too, that God does bring people back and Mm -hmm. God does bring people across our paths. Mm -hmm. It sounds like it's an opening for spiritual conversations. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Jenny, yeah. you have the last word. Oh, <laughs> how has it changed me? Uh, God has opened my eyes to really see, I think, really see who are my neighbours. And my neighbours are not just the people in the nice house next door. And it's challenged me. And I've stepped way out of my comfort zone, really. But I feel like, I honestly feel like I'm finally doing what God called me to do probably 20 something years ago. Um, because I have had the chance to share the gospel with people that I've met and I've had a chance to pray with people and my heart is to see people know Christ. That's, you know, when I sit and hear stories, I just think I know not what you need, I know who you need. Mm. And and every time I get a chance to speak the name of Jesus to somebody, that's when I feel like I'm where I'm supposed to be. Because so. you were a missionary in Papua New Guinea at one point in your life. <laughs> I was. I never had the chance to hardly tell anybody about Jesus because I was in a support role mm. and um, raising my children. And I felt very called to mission. I have for a long time. And I finally feel like this is my time. Um, right here. Right here. On the yeah. east side of Melbourne. That's it. Didn't have to go all the way to Papua New Guinea to do that. <laughs> Yeah, and I love to tell people about Jesus because Jesus changed me and I know he can change them. Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing about the Stable One ministry. Yeah, that's no, great to be here. And yeah, and thank you, Eric. Yeah, thank you, Eric. It's been good. That was Eric Scadabo chatting with Jenny Willits and Trevor Ingemels, the founders of Stable One Ministry, an organisation that helps churches work together to help people who are homeless. And their work reminds me of the verse in the Bible that says, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. For more information about Stable One, their website is stableone.org. That's stableone.org. Well, thanks for joining us. I'm Jimmy Colfax, encouraging you to share your story with someone today. Next time on The Story. Homelessness, just so people understand, I didn't know this myself until I was at at a Salvation Army place um, trying to find accommodation. And they said to me, how long have you been homeless? And I said, I'm not homeless. And they said, well, you don't have anywhere permanent to stay. You don't have permanent tenancy anywhere. And I said, no, but I'm not homeless. So I didn't even realise I was homeless. Carol Emanuel has a heart for helping people who are homeless because there was a two and a half year period in her life when she didn't have a permanent place to call home. We'll find out how her faith has been a stabilising force in her life next time. 
the story. Just another way vision is connecting faith to life. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.